Monster Game Night is a dark comedy actual play podcast that contains personal and political horror. This show is not appropriate for children, and adults can find content warnings in our episode descriptions. I am Russell, and I play the Butcher of the Highway, Gordon. Hi, I'm Josh, and I play Clear Visions, the frustrated fire-blasting Toreador. This is Ben playing Tommaso, the resentful Putinesca. This is Nick playing Jason, the fleet-footed Ban Hakim. Hey, I'm Mike, your sinister storyteller. So what happened last week on Monster Game Night? Clear Visions put on some Daisy Dukes. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like those boys are in a fit of trouble. Them Visions boys are at it again. <laughs> we good? No. The best we're going to get. Yeah. Our humanity is too low to be good. <laughs> Last week, the Coterie set out on the road to Oxford. We are looking for the antimony symbol. Unfortunately, along the way, as seems to be typical with us, we ran through a roadblock with a bunch of pigs, spike strips, and other fun things. I got myself a new ghoul along the way, and he had told me that Lucas Thorne sent these uh, dirty pigs after us. And I got to barbecue some guys with my flamethrower. To set the scene, tonight's session opens on a clear summer night. We can hear crickets chirping in the background, and the sky is clear. We see stars twinkling overhead, though in the distance there are some clouds suggesting that a storm might be in the near future. The night's calm now. You'd hardly know that a few moments ago it was shattered by the sound of gunfire and explosions that seem to have plagued our coterie for the past night. We open on the scene of Gordon Fletcher, who has pinned a state trooper to the ground, threatening him, taking him captive, though promising him a new life. Lucas Thorne, you say? Yeah, Lucas Thorne sent me. How long ago? A couple of nights. This really hurts. I don't know if I'm going to make it. You'll be fine. What did he tell you exactly? I was supposed to disable the bus. Supposed to put a bullet in the engine block. Anything else? Stop you from driving off. Maybe slosh a tire or two. Did he say if there would be more or if he would be coming himself? I think they just wanted you to get caught in the sunlight and run into the woods or something. Hmm. Interesting. And your name is? I'm Brant. Brant. I prefer to know the full name of the people I'm working with. Brant Hagen. Now, none of this would be a lie, would it, Mr. Hagen? No. Look, you promised. First of all, I never promised. I said I could save you, but I never promised that I would save you. We see Officer Brant Hagen. He has tightly cropped, thin white hair. Uh, he's lost all of it on the top of his head. His face is a smear of dirt and muck. His uniform is uh, tousled and torn where it's been drug along the leaves, and he's pulled it partially open, and we can see a streak of blood down his hips. His face falls at that, you almost see the entire defiance within him go out. You know, I really like my cohorts to have a little bit more fight in them. You've got a little bit of fight into you, don't you, Brant? Yeah, I'll fight whoever you want. Good. So I look him in the eyes. Brant, do you have anyone that cares about you? Anyone who would notice if you were gone? Yeah. Who? Wife, kids, they'd all notice. Does your wife really love you? Yeah. Are you sure about that? Been together for 30 years, yeah. Hmm. We'll see. We'll see about that. And I'm just going to take the butt of my gun, my pistol. I'm going to knock him out. And then I'm going to just drag his body along the road and throw him onto the bus. And then once he's on the bus, I'm going to... Because vampire saliva can, like, heal wounds, right? It can. Yeah. Uh, you, so if you are... Your saliva heals wounds made by your teeth. If you're trying okay. to heal him, you have to do a little more than that. Okay. What do I have to do for that? So you can either make a medicine roll or you can make a rouse check. Medicine roll if you want to give him first aid. A rouse check if you intend to ghoul him. Yeah, I'm going to intend to ghoul him. While he's doing that, can we clarify that... I do get hungrier for that. Okay. Can we clarify that Tommy was an earshot? Out of that yes tommy was obviously we were both on the street yeah right yeah I'm, I'm just i'm just gonna use that in a little bit while he's when he's done yeah so gordon you drag officer brant hagen down the road sliding his slick uniform uniform that has been slicked by the blood and muck that covers him now lifting him on to the clear visions tour bus dragging him along the kind of nice carpet leaving a bit of a stain drop him in the back crouch down carve a furrow in your wrist and pump a mouthful of vitae into his mouth his eyes 
flicker open for a moment, and you see the wounds along his side begin to knit shut. Is there anything else you wish to do with him? I'm going to tie him up. So I'm going to like tie up his hands and feet and stuff a pair. Uh, actually, I'm going to take his shoes off and stuck one of his, uh, take one of his socks and stuff it in his mouth. He's also carrying handcuffs. Oh, well, I'm going to obviously use the handcuffs. Okay, so Gordon fumbles around, handcuffs Officer Hagen to a convenient seat post nearby. And what is the rest of the coterie doing? Oh, hey, hey, old man. Did you hear that conversation? They wanted us to run off in the woods in all different directions. As Jason arrives from the woods. <laughs> oh, hey, good. You're back. Can we get on the fucking bus and get to Oxford? I think that we have an appointment. Okay, all right, but do we just want to leave all this stuff here? This is a walking conversation. Get on the bus. I'll walk you somewhere. And I'll step onto the bus. There is, in the distance, you hear a wet thumping sound. <laughs> <laughs> You look around and you notice that Suzanne is not on the bus at the moment. We should leave. <laughs> hey, hold, we hold, on a second. hold on. Hold on. I, I'm not technically on the bus yet. Do I see her? You see her. What's she doing? Tommy looks over and he sees Suzanne in her nice floral dress, crouched down over one of the slightly burned bodies, holding a cleaver in one hand, raising a detached wrist and hand in the other. She turns her head towards Tommy, grins a little bit, pushes her hair back. You see her bite down on her lip almost. In this light, it's hard to see. She sticks out her tongue and you see a thin trickle of blood flowing down it. She positions the stump of the wrist of this hand that she's claimed for herself and drips a couple of droplets of blood, a vitae, into it. A couple of seconds pass and the fingers of the hand begin to twitch. You see the wrist begin to move and the hand suddenly rights itself, climbs up along her arm and settles itself onto her shoulder, kind of running its fingers through her hair. Hey, okay, great. You made a little friend. How much long is this going to take? Just thought I'd lend an extra hand. Oh, hilarious. Keep your hands to yourself. <laughs> I take it back, let her on the bus. <laughs> <laughs> All right, is there a clear path that the bus can drive through? Not at this very moment. The police cars were on either side of a spike strip. Okay, so... A roadblock. All right, hold on just a second. I'm going to haul and I'm going to kick one of the cars and try to move it out of the way. Okay. I don't think that that's worth rolling for. I think it takes a few moments to clear it out. Are you taking anything from the... Are you doing anything with the bodies? Are you doing anything with the police cars? I mean, I thought I was just going to, like, throw the bodies inside the car, make it look like they were in there when it blew up yeah we'd probably want to position the bodies in there and then also just like the whole thing on fire we already well, did that but well there are several cars that aren't on fire right yeah okay so i'm gonna take um <laughs> I'm going to take some of the towels from uh, Clear Vision's bus from the bathroom that I'm sure is in there. Oh, dude, they're monograms. Come on. And I'm going to... I'm sure they have, like, uniforms and shit. I'm going to stuff them. Oh, you don't want me to use your towels? Are your towels monogrammed? I need to know this before. Of course they are. <laughs> okay, Everything no. is monogrammed. Then I'm not going to do that. Instead, I will. Yeah, that's a good idea. I will go and uh, take one of the jackets I'm sure that one of them's wearing tear the arms off, stuff the uh, arms down into the gas tank, uh, and let it soak up some gasoline from inside, and then light them on fire once Tommy's moved them to blow the cars up. Very well. Is there anything else that you wish to do here? Right, so you moved the bodies in while I was doing oh, it, yeah, right? Oh, yeah, totally. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I figured you were going to come back out. Be concerned about a masquerade breach, so I'd move it along. Yep. Rosetta turns the key, the bus comes to life, you're rolling forward again. A few moments pass before you hear the crash and boom of yet another explosion shattering this night, the fourth and fifth explosions that have followed. No, more than that. We've had like, we're up to like seven or eight at this point. Like there's a number. Gordon has officially destroyed like six cars tonight. <laughs> Grand Don't hurt theft. yourself patting yourself on the back. Gordon Theft Auto. <laughs> that was pretty weak. I'm sorry. Cut that. I liked it. Oh. So with the yet again, another explosion trailing behind you, you set out headed towards Oxford. It's just about midnight at this point, maybe a little later, but you know, you have about an hour left in your drive. You'll arrive to Oxford at about one o'clock in the morning. What are you talking about on this drive? All right. 
Can you explain to me what he's doing here? What are you up to? It'll be helpful to have a friendly face when we get to Oxford. Friendly face. You're going to make sure of that? Yeah. Okay. I'm just saying. A- a- as he says this, he's just sipping from a blood bag. <laughs> Actually, that's not a bad idea. I'll have one too. Um, but yeah, he'll he'll totally be our friends. He's already super friendly towards me. Yeah, yeah, you get along great with everybody. I know. What can I say? I'm a bright spot in there in everyone's lives. So, do we even know what the hell we're looking for? Do we know what this symbol is or what it means or... Yeah, kid, you got anything? Well, I know the symbol means sort of like the, the animalistic nature of humanity. As for that, I'm not really sure. Oh, hey, uh, great. Okay. CV, you got any maps on here? I need a map of Oxford here. A map of Oxford? Of course. And I'll pull up my phone and then I'll <laughs> Who's open driving like... Who's driving bus again? <laughs> Rosetta. 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 <laughs> um, and I'll just... Open up whatever GPS app that we have. I got this. It's pretty nice, though. It came loaded with my phone. I got it like five or six years ago, but it should be fine. I imagine you've got a custom voice on your GPS. Yeah, I custom recorded every single line in that. It took like months. Turn right on the State Street. Turn right, you sexy <laughs> bastard. <laughs> okay, well, while you guys have fun with your lines and your numbers and stuff. I'm going to go see if I can get us hooked up with some accommodations. I'm going to research that map, try to investigate where I think the uh, most likely place to find this would be. Give me a roll of intelligence plus survival. Gordon's going to go watch uh, Tommy's me. hookup action. Excuse me, a private matter. So Tommy... God damn You'll it. never see him. Tommy steps away to a corner of the bus that's probably the closest to the driver's seat, kind of the most private corner of it where there is a seat by itself. I've described the interior of the Clear Visions tour bus many, many times, but just to hit it one more, once more, it is light leather, very comfortable conversation pit style, heavy, heavy curtains to block out the outside world, softly lit, the appropriate accommodations for television's most important medium. Tommaso takes a seat in a nice Nice, soft chair, pulls out his phone, and who are you calling? I'm going to give Skeeter a try first. All right. Phone rings for a moment. You hear Skeeter's voice on the other end. Yeah? Hey, Skeeter. It's, uh, it's Bianchi. Yeah, Mr. Bianchi. It's always a pleasure to hear from you. How can I help you? I appreciate that. So we um, had to make a quick exit from town. I uh, guess you might have heard about part of it, but um, yeah, maybe I'll be able to fill you in that, that part of the story another time. So... We're headed for Oxford at the moment. I need to know if you have any hookups there for me. Uh, what what kind of hookup are you looking for? Accommodations. Accommodations. Uh, as a regular motel, not not home, have motels. No, there? not regular. I I need to have something a little more discreet. If you catch my drift. All right, I I gotta put on my glasses. Give me just a second, and uh, let me look through this. You can hear shuffling from the other line. He says, "All right, I don't got I don't got too many contacts there. Uh, just a well, I got Eddie's. It's a storage depot, I guess. He does like long term storage." Might be able to pass a knot there or something without too much too much disturbance. You'd have a little bit of security, but uh, I don't got any anything more than that. He sometimes helps me store some you know some merchandise when it's on the move. Okay, that's useful. Hey, appreciate you. I'll I'll let the capo know that you helped me out with this. Is there anything else? Nope, we're good. I'll catch you later. Okay, I think we'll be back through Jamestown at some point. I'll be sure to let you know. Tommy hangs up. The line goes dead. All right, so. That's not totally satisfactory for me, so I'm going to give Capo a call. Ooh, okay. Tommaso dials the number he was given for Capo Bienevicio de Putinesca. Ah, uh, yes. Boy, that's a mouthful. Yep, that's why he wants me to say it. Anybody pick up? Ring, ring, ring. Ring, ring, ring. For a while. Banana phone. <laughs> do, 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 do. A very, very long while, and then the line comes to life. Hi, this is Elaine. It's about time, Elaine. It's Galenti. Galenti. Is Mr. Bienavicio expecting a call from you? No, he's not, but this is important. Tommaso Galenti. Tell him I'm on the line. He's going to want to talk to me. Okay. I'm going to connect you to Murdy, and I think she's busy right now, so it may be a little bit. Can you hold? Better not take too long. Okay, please hold. (laughs) Disrespectful. And you like this family? (laughs) We can't choose our family, right? Exactly. (laughs) Cutting back to Jason, Clear Visions, and Gordon. What are you up to? What is Suzanne up to? Suzanne is getting a little bit of a shoulder rub from her new disembodied hand. (laughs) She's giving a hand job. (laughs) (laughs) 
Um, okay, perfect. I get up and say, wow, that flamethrower really did a number on these digs. I'll be right back. And he's covered in like soot and grime. And he'll go back to the back of the bus where his room is, where Jerry and Suzanne also set up earlier. Okay. And I'm going to go straight to Jerry Carl. Okay. So Jerry is a, his head is shaved bald. He's a little bit of a younger man though, probably in his late 20s. You can see that he has stationed himself very close to Suzanne's trunk. He's seated upon it. He looks badly shaken. There's a sheen of sweat across his face. As Clear Visions approaches, he looks up and says, I, are they, is, are we safe? As I walk into that room, I activate my awe power of presence. And I also, it's almost like going through a veil. When I cross into that room, my skin tightens, my wrinkles decrease. I look 15 years younger and I am just perfectly sculpted by the gods as my outer beauty from my new lore sheet approaches. So that is, I get the looks merit at four dots. So I'm going to be just a fucking brick house of presence right now. But I have to really disguise myself if I want to try to hide. Like it looks like radiant clear visions all the time. And I look right into Jerry's eyes and I say, Jerry, take your shirt off. <laughs> Isn't this kind of yes. podcast? <laughs> yes, of of course. And Jerry fumbles for a second. He's wearing a loose fitting T-shirt. He removes it. You see that Jerry is not really in incredibly good shape. He's a little bit pasty. Doesn't really work out very much. I grab it with the quickness, shove it in his mouth, and then bite him on the neck. Okay. How much hunger is Clear Vision slaking? Two. Two. Okay. The maximum safe drink that will keep you here for the rest of the scene if you plan to do it carefully. Okay. Jason, give me the results of your intelligence plus survival role. I think intelligence occult would make more sense. We're going to go with it. <laughs> <laughs> I will willpower that as well. <laughs> Ooh, much, much better. How many crits you got, son? <laughs> One crit, but that's messy. So that is eight. So eight and we have a messy critical. Yep. Okay. Ideas for a messy critical. I... This would be a hard one. All I'm doing is studying a map. <laughs> I know. It is a hard one. Jason gets really pissed off that this phone is so slow and old, so he changes the language to French. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, the ball's in your fucking court now. My kindergarten vocab doesn't know the word clear. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, Jason, that is a critical. That's a huge success. So feel free to keep asking questions because I don't necessarily have a depth of information for you that justifies a crit. I'm sorry. But setting Clear Vision's phone to French was kind of worth it to me. Jason takes a look around the campus of Oxford College. It's kind of the center of Oxford itself. Oxford is a pretty small city, population of less than 20,000, and the student body of Oxford College makes up almost 25% of that. So this is pretty much a college town. He sees that the buildings of Oxford College are arranged in a rough semicircle around a twisted metal statue called the Wolf's Head. Hmm. I think we have something here. Jason does come across some notes about the the wolf's head statue that say it's at the center of some student traditions. There's a tradition called running with the wolves. That is a time when the students get together and go streaking. And it is a mark of honor to avoid being caught by campus police. Or it's also a mark of honor to be caught, too. Okay, Marty, listen, I don't care whatever thing you believe in. You better be praying to it if you don't collect me to the couple right fucking now. Do you understand? I've been waiting for 15 fucking minutes. Only 15 minutes? The Kappa was a very busy man. Very busy. If I just march in there... Did you tell him I was on the line? He's gonna want to talk to me. He knows what I'm up to. Well, it's your head if he doesn't. Just hold for a second. For fuck's sake. There's an uncomfortably long silence. Marty's voice returns to the other line, and she says... He says it better be good. It's good. Trust me. There's a click. Tell me. Evening, boss. Sorry for getting tough, but I need to get through to you. I hope it's worth it. Oh, it's very worth it. So, you remember that mission I got sent on? Vaguely. Okay, I'll fill him in just a little bit. And so now we've ended up blowing up 
a lupine tribe. We're on the road to a different city, and I'm trying to figure out some place for us to bed down for a little bit. I need to know if you got anything. I tried Skeeter. He didn't have much. No one expects much from people like Skeeter. I'm working with what you gave me first. You know that I know to do that. But as you can tell, we kind of have a more serious problem on our hands than we originally thought. There's a long pause, and the capo's voice comes on the other side and he tells Tommaso, you know, we don't have much of a presence anywhere outside of Lafayette. There's got to be something. We, we got game all over this territory. The best that I have for you. There's a horse trainer by the name Raymond Kimbrell. Helps us run some jobs. He's got facilities that I would consider to be secure. Hey, wait a minute, Raymond. I think I worked with him a few years ago. Okay, yeah, yeah. You know what? That's perfect. I didn't realize he'd moved there. Okay, great. Great. You know what? You really helped me out. You, you know, listen, I'll get Marty some flowers or something later, okay? Better get yourself some flowers. I always got flowers. Don't worry about that. Capo hangs up. Clear visions. Jason returns your phone. I open it up and the GPS says, Bonjour. C'est de vision claire le ferme medium perdu à la télévision. Vouillez faire un demi-tour illégal. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> That was one take, no practice. <laughs> it's very, very good. Also, hello, this is Clear Visions, the most famous medium on television. Please make an illegal U-turn. <laughs> A few moments pass in silence as the coterie travels along and eventually arrives to the outskirts of Oxford. Oxford is a very, very small city, not even properly called a city. It's got a population of under 20,000 people. Many of that is support staff for Oxford College. Oxford College has a student body of about 5,000, makes up a good majority of the residents of this city. The city is arranged around the college at its very center. The bus proceeds along one of the very few roads. You can see whitewashed buildings along the sides, very classic colonial era. Most of them are obviously part of a historic society and well-kept. We reach a downtown and we see that the buildings, the tallest building here is only about four stories tall. Then we see the college. The college is about the same size. Looks like it's made up of about half a dozen buildings. Arranged in a rough semicircle, the buildings themselves are a gray brick. There is very soft phosphorescent lighting running in strips along the sidewalks. And we see that at the very center of the college, there is a twisted, hunching metal statue and what looks like a ring of people gathered around it. All right. Took a little bit of work, but I got a place for us to uh, bed down for the day if that's what you guys want to do. If we need to do anything here, we can do it now. How much more time do we have in the night? It is just about one o'clock in the morning. You have about six hours until dawn. I would like to make a phone call. All right. Who are you calling? Uh, I'm going to call Annabelle. Ooh, interessante. Okay. What are you asking Annabelle for? So I'm going to use my intern lore sheet. Um, and I want to ask her for guidance on Lucas Thorne, specifically like any intel she may have on him, his resources, who he's connected to, that kind of stuff. Okay. Annabelle does not answer her phone. It is very late at night. Do I need to first roll for my Bane severity? Ooh. You just had to admit. Probably, yes. Only because he keeps forgetting it. Thank you. <laughs> So it is your intelligence plus technology against your blood potency. Your blood potency is still one, so... I got a whole two dice in this. Yeah. Uh, I did get uh, one success. Okay. The call goes through. Gordon reaches Annabelle's voicemail. Hey, Annabelle. I know we haven't talked in a while, but I have this thorn in my side that I really just need to get some information on. Its name is Lucas. You know, Lucas Thorne, uh, if you could give me a call back. Cool. Clear Visions exits the back of the bus. Almost immediately says, Tommy, that's a great idea. I think it's a great backup plan in case we can't find that thing and get out of here tonight. Yeah. Yeah, I'd hope so. I had to, Unfortunately, I think I had to burn the one favor I was going to get out of the capo to find out about this. Whoever this, whatever Richmond Kimbrell's up to here, it doesn't sound like he wanted me to know about it. So I probably can't reach out to the organization for a little while. I, g I gotta say that name just screams money. It's probably luxurious there. Oh, I Jason, know. Jason, what are we looking for? <laughs> Ran right over me. I love it. Probably something old building. 
in this campus? So we at the campus right now, or what are we doing here? I'm I'm saying this up to you. What if you told Rosetta to do? Yeah, true. She was out here the whole time. How sure are we that it's actually on this campus? I'd say if you need more time to figure it out, we go to where I know it's supposedly safe. Thoughts, Jason? How are you feeling about this? All signs are definitely pointing on this campus somewhere. Okay. Are we really going to r- roll up to the campus in this like this? I think that's a very great point okay that's a good point uh rosetta go to uh, find a dark street mr visions yeah sure why not go to that dark spot i burn bright it doesn't even matter it's like a place to stay and you guys don't even use it i said it's a good backup plan the bus shutters to a halt this is a good moment to remind you that rosetta did hitch her suv to the back of the tour bus yeah but her suv is fucked up right a little bit yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah. Are, th- are there any cars on the street? Yeah. Uh, so we pull over to one of the fairly wide streets that marks Oxford. The houses are whitewashed siding. Fairly nice cars here. Pretty upper middle class. Pretty ritzy. There's certainly cars here if Gordon is looking for a free ride. Yeah, I'm looking for a free ride. Um, preferably something older that won't cause much issue and that is somewhat inconspicuous. Stealing from poor college kids. What can I say? Yeah, Gordon looks around and he's got a couple of choices. There is, because this is a college town, you get cases where there are college students living in rented housing right beside the people who can actually afford to own that housing, which means that there are some old cars that are very, very nice, classic muscle cars, and there are some old cars that are beat down college student cars. An 89 Civic with a missing fender? No, no, no. Give give me an 86 (laughs) Volvo, one of those... (laughs) Cars. Yeah. <laughs> In French. <laughs> cars. Cars. Automobile. Le automobile. I was First like, of all, why can't I remember the word for it's car? It's le automobile. Le automobile. Yeah. Um, le. <laughs> I'm going to go. Automobile. What? It's a, I'm going to find the yeah. darkest part of the street and go and find, uh, like, a muscle car that's in that. So give me a roll of dexterity plus larceny. And I am skipping straight to the break in part of this because. Would burglary count for this? Yes. Okay. So that would be six dice. Do you want to take half? No. <laughs> <laughs> there goes that blood bag. That's four successes. That's more than enough. Gordon finds a nice 1968 Chevy Nova hatchback. Kind of when that st- body style first got popular. Soft silver along the sides in really great shape. Obviously, the owner takes excellent care of it. So then I'm going to, once I've broken in and jacked the car, I'm going to go over to uh, the uh, uh, the SUV that we have. I'm going to unscrew the license plate off the SUV and swap it with the license plate on the car. Takes a moment. Then I'm going to say, all right, let's hop in. Let's go check out this uh, this university. And I start the car and uh, wait for them to hop in. Yeah, sure. I got shotgun. I got a shotgun right here if that's what you want. My shotgun. <laughs> <laughs> no, mine. Don't, don't you want to know how I got it from you? <laughs> you didn't roll for that. Fuck off. <laughs> Clear Visions struts his way to the car, opens the door, and gets in. Um, are you sure it's a good idea that I go? I mean, I'm still kind of all sooty and everything. Hey, Tommy, I have changes of clothes for my bus drivers in there. You could just wear one of those. You you realize that your bus driver's clothes aren't going to fit me, right? I didn't say that. <laughs> just kind of tear off the sleeves <laughs> just, a little just bit. Just pop in. It'll be fine. Leave it unbuttoned so you're showing a nice, like, but- chunk of... <laughs> It's cropped off. <laughs> hey, it, it, it. <laughs> For real, though, it looks pretty badass. That's what I'm saying. You know, it really adds a lot to your street cred. You don't need to worry about my street cred. That's not the problem right now. I'm trying to be inconspicuous. Do you have blood on you? You're like 6'5". You're conspicuous always. 6'2". <laughs> you're, you're conspicuous as fuck. Now get in the car. You coming, kid? So the coterie piles into this clown car. Teresa on the lap. Oh. She'll curl up in there. How, it's how, totally cramped. I was about to say, how <laughs> big is she too. curled up? Uh, probably not that big, actually. Okay. Probably, I'd say like a suitcase, because she can 
birds get small. Yeah, they they have like real tiny bones. All right, come back. So I'm going to start like driving around the university. Okay. And just seeing like the lay of the land. Yeah. So Gordon circles the university. You see those six buildings and you see that at the very center, there is a growing group of men and women gathered into a circle. You see a figure standing at the very center, obviously commanding the attention of the group, and they have gathered around this twisted metal statue. It's a dark, dark, deep ashen gray, and depending on the angle that Gordon looks at it from, sometimes it looks like it's dripping fluid, and sometimes he can make out features that look almost animalistic. Hey, Jason, do you think that's it? It's definitely a sign. It's like pointing or facing in a particular direction. <laughs> Always looks like it's pointing at you. Give me a roll of wits plus awareness. Can we all do it? Yeah, I think this can be a group roll. Who has a who has dice to help Jason with this? I have five dice. I have dice. If you give me instincts, I got dice. So add two to your pool for the help from your coterie mates. And do you want to take half? Because that looks like ten dice. That's not even close to 10 dice. Really? <laughs> it's like eight. It's oh not even God. close. A mere eight dice. I don't know how many it is. Seven. <laughs> oh, the inhumanity. Four. <laughs> oh, look, another messy crit for eight more successes. <laughs> okay, I think he can stop rolling for a while. <laughs> He doesn't have stuff for this, damn it. You get a really clear view of the statue as you drive through the crowd. <laughs> <laughs> no, he, he, he pushes, the grab the head. steering wheel, yeah. rip it. <laughs> That's what I think happens. I think that Jason looks at it, and as Jason looks, he sees very clearly there is a wolf's head right here. It is a dripping and twisted wolf's head, and he sees that the men and women gathered around this, they're brawling. They're getting together in groups of two and three and engaging in fist fights. He sees this. He is immediately impatient, certain this is it without a doubt. He grabs the wheel, jerks the car to the side. The car kind of spins a little bit. We hear a screech of tires. Jason bears his fangs and looks at Gordon and says, there. A fuck. Whoa, boy. Sit, boo-boo, sit. You heard him. Let's go in there. It looks kind of like a rager. No, listen, if anybody's going in there, it's me. That looks like my kind of party and i'm what? not even that interested in it exactly let's, let's, let's go let's calm down here people we yeah. have no clue what this thing is if in fact they are fighting we don't want to rage ourselves yeah. okay i have worked really hard to stay under control you sure you want to set me off the leash all among them no, no, no that's no, no, what no. i'm saying i don't want us to tommy's got a point here he's got a good idea this is this is a way in what by laying him off the leash no no this is a terrible idea are you serious look this is not a good idea. Let's just do some recon real fast. Keep our distance. I'm going to find some place to park. No, I think they are our recon. Who's our recon? I have to agree. This crowd. They'll tell us what we want to know as soon as Tommy shows them who's boss. No, this is a ticking time bomb. We're getting rid of the cult. I don't care. We're going in there. This is a lead, right? This is a lead. No, it's not. No. I am an investigator, and this is a lead. I open the door. God damn. Gordon, Gordon's gum. All right, Tommy, the car. buckle up. Fly, you fool! <laughs> and I'll throw Teresa so that she's above the crowd. <laughs> yeah. Teresa flies out, circles. It's going to go so badly. You can hear now the sound of a crowd, not filled with rage, filled with triumph, like they're watching a sports match. They're cheering each other on. This isn't some kind of gang brawl. This is like watching a dojo. This is like watching a group of people working out together. You see that at the very head of the circle, there is an elderly looking man, elderly in that his hair is long and white, comes down to his shoulders falling in soft curls. He's taken off his shirt. You see he's wearing very nice bright blue dress slacks and brown dress shoes and he is heavily muscled. You look at him and you look at Tommy and you kind of tell these are two people that can handle themselves. You can see he's watching the crowd and he's watching the bouts that are happening and he's stepping in to offer pointers or split people up when the fight gets too intense. Hey, hey. all right, Tommy, I know you can make this a show, but you're going to have to pull your punches. We don't want anyone dead here. Understand? <laughs> hey, kid, can I borrow your rifle? I'm going to stay by the car. This what? <laughs> I'm going to provide support from back here. I was just going to walk in. They're not fighting us. Not look yet. at that statue. Let me see your rifle, kid. I'm going to stick All back right. here. 
Sure. I'm, I'm going to set up in like a sniper's perch in one of the trees. Okay. To be able to cover them from here. All right. Gordon finds has no trouble finding a sniper's perch. Has a very comfortable view. Obviously, I'm going to do that stealthily. If I need to roll stealth, I will. I am not going to make you roll for this because I know you have approximately 27 dice in that pool. <laughs> <laughs> You're taking half like it or not. <laughs> forcing you to take half on that one yes fine i'll take my <laughs> seven successes <laughs> I, 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 I can just picture you picture it you listening to this back and every time you have like a massive roll you're just sitting there like ah, yeah it feels so good the coterie are we three of the coterie are we going in i don't like this but if you insist i'll activate my all Ooh, okay and then i will just calmly walk towards the crowd i do the opposite i activate daunt hell yes <laughs> <laughs> and walk through the crowd we got good cop bad cop i got nothing <laughs> yeah and clear visions is just he's like gliding he's not even like barely touching the ground walking just just gliding through if he can this i don't want to touch anybody Everyone's looking at you and they're completely ignoring me i'm gonna go inspect that statue we see the crowd of college-aged men and women parting ways to allow the coterie to pass they've gathered as i said in a semicircle around a looks like about three different fights going on at once the old man looks directly up at clear visions as he enters his gaze does linger on jason for just a moment long enough to make eye contact and then he looks back to clear visions and he shrugs his hair back pulling it back behind his ears he says evening gentlemen you're a little older than my usual fare though this one over here the dark hair seems maybe like he fits in what brings you out here hello my name is Terrence stevenson and i am just visiting. And I'm an art admirer. I would love to just check out the statue. I don't want to interrupt your, your, you know, you look like you're having a really good, like, extracurricular activity on this campus. But I just want to check out the details. Look at that baby. And I'll just keep advancing on the statue. The older man looks a little bit bemused by that. He gives Clear Visions kind of a long look and he says i'm sure that's what you think but sure go ahead you can take a look at that no problem at all no thanks you know you wouldn't want to punch an old man with glasses and he'll just he like stroll up to it jason the crowd parts for you uh obviously you have daunt active they are intimidated into submission out of your way tomaso how are you handling this i'm just walking along with both of them and once Clear gets up to the statue and starts looking at it, I'm going to position myself between him and the old man. I'm basically going to try to, like, basically physically shield Clear from the old man's vision. I need... Tommy, draw their attention away from us, would you? I'm going to try to do. Just give me a second. I need Jason and Clear Visions to give me a pool of intelligence plus occult. Who has more dice in that? Uh, not me. I've got seven. Okay. Clear Visions, do you have any dice in a cult? Yeah, I have two. Okay. Uh, yeah, and I have four total. I have two in a cult. So, Jason, add two die to your pool for the assistance you are receiving. So, while they're doing that. All right, so, what's this sparring session that's going on here? What are you all up to? Just enjoying the night, enjoying the strength of our bodies and the vigors of being alive. Name's Bastion. Ah, Bastion. Marco Bianchi. It's a pleasure. You know, you look like you belong out here. There's definitely places I belong. This is similar to those. I can tell a fighter when I see one. Looking at your face, I can see you've taken a blow or two over many, many, many years. That'd be fair to say. Now, you're coming out here to what exactly? Because it's been a long time since I've seen someone from what I might call the old country to visit me in my little kingdom. Just passing through. Just passing through and curious about that statue. Oh, don't don't get me wrong. They're curious about the statue. I have no interest in it. think I know quite a lot about that statue, but think I know why you're here. But I'm not sure I want to tell you. Jason, what did you come up with? If he did it again, I swear. Close. <laughs> ah, it's so close. We got six. Six successes. Jason notices that this is 
clearly the head of a wolf. Twisted and flowing metal forms the shape of a wolf, and there is a very distinctive mouth. The teeth inside of that mouth, though, they're not fangs like what a wolf usually has. They're fangs much more like what you would find in Jason or Clear Vision's mouth. Oh, well, that's unusual. Gazes at it a little longer, and he notices that the edges of it, they're discolored. They're brown almost with rust, except there's no other rust on this statue anywhere else. Interesting. Well, it's nice to know you could be a font of information. Hey, do we need any information right now? Yeah. How high you up? You got a lot of information. I was hoping you'd say no. <laughs> How high up is the mouth of this thing? It's a wolf's head, so it's long, facing towards the ground with the mouth opening towards exactly the dirt and grass upon which it sits. It's not high up at all. This thing is fascinating. Look at the detail. And I'll reach out. I'm going to touch the fang. Does it feel, is it like wet? Like actually wet? Does not feel actually wet, though as Clear Vision's... I slap his hand down onto it. What the fuck, dude? <laughs> Do it. Onto the spike of it? Yeah. Clear Visions sees, maybe with horror, I don't know if he's an old enough kindred to no longer feel horror when something like this happens, but the tip of the metallic statue pierces easily through the palm of his hand, surprisingly sharp. Of course, Clear Visions only bleeds when he wants to. Is he willing to let any blood flow? Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm actually going to do the blush. I'm going to do the blush of love. My boy's right got now. next! <laughs> Fuck. Clear Visions forces a small droplet of blood... To flow out do you get hungrier i do okay clear visions feels his hunger increase slightly the beast arises within him and it seems stronger here than it has elsewhere the metallic fang that has pierced his skin suddenly turns brilliant bright white the white follows down inside of the wolf's jaw rising from the bottom to the top and we see beneath it what was formerly hard packed dirt flashes a brilliant white and forms a set of stone steps leading downward into the earth that's just fantastic stonework wouldn't you agree that kind of hurt though that's all right good job visions thanks and i'm gonna slowly take my hand off of it <laughs> do i see anyone suspicious in the area from my cypress perch yeah two of them <laughs> <laughs> about to say you can see that the crowd has gathered they've collected themselves a little bit more tightly and the fights that were going on they have stopped and this group of individuals has kind of coalesced almost in lockstep to form a barrier between the coterie and the safety that would be offered by the rest of campus they almost look like they have them cornered right now does your rifle have like a, a laser pointer on it? No. Jason is a professional. He wouldn't have something like that. Doesn't, doesn't even have a scope. Oh. Oh, really? I guess he doesn't need it. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Hard sights. <laughs> okay. Um, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Ah, son of a bitch. All right. I'm going to turn. I'm going to address everybody. If any of you got a problem with these two going down there and checking this out, we're going to deal with it right now. You got me? Otherwise, you're going to stay where you are. All right. All right. Let's just calm down a moment. How about we make a little wager here? <laughs> Who's the toughest guy here? Immediately, every single face turns towards Bastion. Yeah, that'd be me. <laughs> I point at Tommy. <laughs> Are you fucking serious right now? You got this. Come on, look at him. He's a pushover, right? I'll push you over. Now, I know what you're going to find down there, and I think I know who sent you. And that, well, I'm not sure you're going to like what you see down there. Well... I think I'm going to have to let them find out. Otherwise, it's going to be you and me duking it out since the kid here seems obsessed about seeing us do this. So I like that idea. All right, fine. All right, kid, hold this. I take my jacket off. The crowd gathers into a very almost unbelievably perfect circle. Bastion steps in. You see now 
his skin shimmering in the moonlight, his hair hanging down, catching the light, flickering off of it. You can see the cords of muscle running along his back as he rolls his shoulders. He looks at Tommaso and he says, Now I don't even know what we're wagering right now. I just know that I might be in for someone who can actually put up a challenge. I can guarantee you I am. I'll offer my part of the wager and you come up with something else. If I win, you tell them what they're going to see down there. And I think that if I win, I get your servitude. For how long? Ten years. That's just a blink. Tommy, Tommy, you're already indentured. Think about this. <laughs> That's not what that is. Servitude? What is this? If you win, we'll leave. No questions asked. <laughs> 40 of us, three of you. I'm pretty sure I can make you leave if I want to. I want something for my trouble. You should have seen I what happened the last two groups of guys that fought us. They weren't me. Either way, now you boys have fun. And I'm going to start like backing down the steps. I hate all of you so much right now. All right. So with that, I'm going to take off my gun holster. Obviously, we're going at this hand to hand. Knock a motherfucker out. I'm going to beat this guy's ass into the ground. Because apparently that's the only way things are going to get done right now. All right, Bastion, I just want you to know this isn't personal. Hey guys, we're Monster Game Night. Thank you so much for joining us this week. I'm Mike, your storyteller, and I am joined at the table by... Ben, playing Tomasa. Josh, playing Clear Visions. Nick, playing Jason. Russell, playing Gordon. And we need the outro up on the screen. Yes. Yeah, we do. <laughs> Tune in next week. I did not know that. You haven't listened to us often enough to know that? Come on. That's on you, not on me. Now, this is the this is the part of the, the legwork that the audience pulls in, where they have to replay <laughs> previous, <episodes>. previous episodes. <laughs> Go back and rewind episode. <laughs> I'm going to plug in a timestamp here. You'll know what I mean. <laughs> and I'm Russell, and I play Gordon. Follow us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or your favorite podcatcher. We'd love to hear from you on social media. Find us on Twitter, Facebook, and Reddit at Monster Game Night. Also, please give us a rating, write a review, and tell your friends and families about the show. Word of mouth is the best way for a small independent show like ours to grow. Hope that you can come to our next Monster, Monster Game, Game Night. Night. Cool. Can I just say, I think we should remove the if you enjoyed it and just say, leave us a review. <laughs> review us anyway. We don't fucking care.